11.35, Jesus wept. And the title of, of, my, of my word tonight is, It's About Death. And the word I have regarding to death is, don't respect it. In, in John 11, Jesus is given a powerful word and, and he's telling people who he, are, who he is and what he's here to do. And while he's speaking, he feels in his spirit, he recognizes that Lazarus has died. But he finishes his word and he moves on to where uh, Mary and Martha lives and they're, they're distraught, that they're, they're crying. And, and that he's even being accused of not being around in time. And I know many times we feel like that, that if Jesus had been here, it would not have happened. And when Jesus saw how they wailed, how they cried, he too was touched. And the Bible says he wept. And I always ask myself, um, why did he weep? And I know it's such a special Bible verse, but as I looked at it closer, he, he wept because of the issue of, of death. Um, I know he's a human and he, he, he's human and God, and he, he feels what we feel, but he, he is weeping and they are weeping because of death. And that's why I say don't respect it, because death was, was, was a thing that's always been there. And sometimes we, we give death a higher place than it really needs, because as we look at, at, at the gospel, Jesus was not a man who respected death. In fact, he calls Lazarus to come forth. He calls Talitha to, to come forth. He even brings himself forth. He's no re respecter of, of death. And I tell you, in the beginning, death Death was always there because before Adam and Eve fell, they, they had a discussion with, with, with Satan. And the discussion was whether or not they would die. So death was, death was there. But the Bible does it this way. They, the, the Word of God says that Adam and Eve, or Adam, was created from the dust of the earth. And, and dust, the dust that he was created from is understood as being something frail and, and, and flighty. But it was intended to endure. It, it was intended to, to, to live. And it was intended to live because the Spirit of God dwelt within. That is to tell you that whatever issue you are going through right now, and if you feel that you can't make it, or something is wrong, or you feel low, or you feel you've lost it, you feel that you ruined it, let me tell you, God doesn't even care what we think or what we are. And sometimes we may feel like dust, but if the Spirit of God is dwelling with us to any degree, He is able to sustain you. And in Adam and Eve's case, they were to be sustained in that flighty, um, dusty way. The dust is, is, is meant to be something that is flighty, that, that is insubstantial, that, that, that can be easily bothered or, or touched and be moved. Or because they had the Spirit of God, they were able to endure indefinitely. And death was just lingering as a contamination. Death is not a spirit. Death is not a God. But it was lingering as a contamination. And that's why it, it spread to us all down the line. And when Jesus sees people crying, it, it's as if he's having a Jephthah moment. I mean, no, Jephthah was was so wanting to achieve the thing that he said, whatever comes out of my, my house tonight, I'm going to kill it. And he has to keep his word. So the Lord God had, had put death in there and he told them, whoever touches this thing, eats of this thing, shall surely die. And Jephthah kept his word and slew his daughter. And the Lord weeped just like Jephthah did because his heart was breaking because this is not the way it was supposed to be. This is not the way it is. And through all our lives, we, we live in fear of death. And the Bible says that, that, that he who, who tries to keep his life shall lose it. And he that will lose his life shall keep it. It's another rejection of death. And through all, throughout the Bible, those people who have failed are those who either disrespected death or misused its power. When the Lord God sent the, the 12 spies out, the 10 feared death from the giants, and they couldn't get the job done. When, when, when David was about to face Goliath, the army of Israel was afraid of death, and they shook in their boots, but David wasn't. He did not respect death. When, when, when Job sat in his ashes and his heart what was breaking, he wished that he could die. He gave death too much respect. 
when Judas knew that he had done wrong rather than come to the Lord and, and confess and ask for forgiveness, Judas respected death too much and chose death over the word of God. When the 12 disciples ran away, when, 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 when Jesus was arrested, they ran because they respected death more than they respected the Lord. And when Jesus saw these people crying, he cried because he knew this was not supposed to happen. It was not to be this way, that he had came to give us life and to, and to live more abundantly. And when, and when Jesus goes through his woes, he doesn't go through his woes necessarily to end death. He goes to end the cause of death. The wages of sin is death. And Jesus is, is after the, the thing that causes what we're afraid of. And it seems that in our walking and in our doings, we are more afraid of death than we are the, of the things that cause it. We're easily, all of us, able to accept uh, the, 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 the act, the sin, the things that we know we shouldn't do. But we respect death more. We, we act as if it doesn't exist. And then we, when it, when it befalls us, we act as if the, the world it is, is coming to an end. But I tell you, it's just a contamination. It's just the virus. It's just it's just it's just the, the payment we get for, for our conduct. And, and and Jesus is weeping because he doesn't want us to suffer this way. And when Jesus goes to the cross, when Jesus goes through his circumstances, when Jesus is tortured, when when they finally uh, get their hands on him, he is there to, to pay the debt of the sin. He is there to, because the wages of being paid up and it creates a debt, a debt with God and Jesus is there to pay it. And when Jesus is, is, is being beaten, it, it's as if he's taking on the, this disease that, that we have from our sinful ways because death is a disease. And when they stab Jesus in, in, in the side, he, 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 is, he, is, he, is, he is as if he is, he is being, he's taking on the offense that we took from, from taking the fruit that we shouldn't have. And when he's nailed, it's, 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 it's as if he's, he's demonstrating how because of sin, day by day, we are forced to decay. And the bitter vinegar that they give him is like the, the taste that we have of each day. And the crown that he's given is how we puff ourselves up, even though we are, we are facing death, dead men and women of God walking but for the Lord. And the cross that he has to carry is the burden of it. And when they give him his 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 death clothes, it it's as if it's it's symbolizing the, the futile efforts we use to feel good rather than reaching out to the Lord because these simple things, these these acts of righteousness, these things that we call righteous, as we know, are nothing but filthy rags. And the words that he used on the cross that we celebrate on Easter, the words like Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do is just another telling of the gospel from start to finish. But when Jesus gives up the ghost, so to speak, when he descends into hell, he goes there to conquer death and hell. And I'm telling you right now, do not respect death. It has already been conquered. It has already been defeated. The minute we don't respect death and we understand that, that we're looking at the wrong thing, we can look at the ways in which we conduct ourselves. What Jesus has did is that those who, who are supposedly dead, um, or quote unquote, are just people who are sleeping. He's saying that, 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 that as he rose again from, from the dead, that he's going to raise us all up and he's going to prove that death has no sting. And he wants us to live as if we don't respect death. Here's what happened. When the Lord God told Joshua and the people of Israel to smite each and every Canaanite, Amorite, whomeverite that there was when they entered the land, they failed to do it. Why did they fail to do it? They thought that death 
is a thing that was so terrible and so horrible as to make God's word of no account that God had to be wrong because death had death was reigning. But they didn't understand that that that, that death is a thing that's sure for all of us, and death is only a temporary condition. What the Lord was doing, He was just He, he was just setting a time for them to 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 to, to, to begin to, to pass over. He was not destroying them. He was moving them on from step one to step two. And when we fear death, we would do things like that. We would seek to, to, to preserve certain things that should not be, be preserved. And, and we, we act to even, even use death for things we should not use it for. Like when Moses decides to kill the Egyptian and bury him in the sand, that was not Moses' calling. When, when, when David killed Uriah, that was not David, that was not David's calling. Because we respect death as, as a thing to, to which we want to control and use for others. But if we just look at the example of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, who did not intend for us to ever face death, but what he did because his love is everlasting, he has made death into just a fleeting thing for us all. What we got to do, what we have to understand is that Jesus loves us just as much as he loved, he loved Lazarus, as much as he loved Talitha. And if even if we think that the, the, the love we should have had has decayed, or the career we had has died, because it's not just somebody, or the things, the dreams that we always had is, is dead here tonight, I'm telling you that it's only sleeping. And if you just hold on to the words that Jesus us is saying tonight, he's standing you there with you. The things that we mourn right now tonight, the things that we wish we should not have done, the things that we wish we should have stayed away from, it's just, it's just our, our, our respect of death and, and thinking that because a thing has failed yesterday, that it's failed forever. But the Bible says, seek ye first, the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and these things shall be added unto you. So it could be your brother Lazarus. It could be your daughter Talitha. It could be anything that, that you are mourning here tonight. I'm telling you, we serve a God who is not so far removed that he can't feel what we feel. He's weeping right now. He's weeping over the things that we weep, that we weep for. You're not alone. There are things we can't tell nobody, but Jesus sees it. Jesus might be elsewhere, we think, giving a word to somebody, helping somebody, but he remembered Lazarus as Lazarus died. He remembers you as you think you're dying, as sickness takes you, as this pandemic sweeps the world. Yes, Jesus feels it. Jesus is with us, but we cannot be afraid, so afraid of death that we don't live our lives. We can't be so afraid of death that we begin to doubt Jesus like Mary did. We can't be so afraid to death that we are too afraid to make the step that we know we should take. We cannot be so afraid of death that, that, we, cannot, that we cannot see that the Lord is the Lord over death and death is nothing at all. One of the reasons why, why Satan is so jealous of us, hear me now, he is a celestial being. He was made to be near God. He was made to, to be in some place that we cannot be. Yet still, we he sinned and he's out, he's out forever. And we sinned and we're less, less than him, but we are still in keeping with the promise. So he's gonna make you think that this illusion of death is the end all be all. It's not. I don't care what you've done, I don't care what you've lost. I don't care what they told you. I don't care what you feel. I don't care how much you've cried. I don't care who has left you. I don't care who has died. I'm telling you, it's all an illusion because if we believe in what the Lord God said that he's coming again, if we believe that, that, that there is a great getting up morning, we are not to respect death. We are to live our lives as a sacrifice to be poured out. That means the things you dream of today, the hopes you have today, the things you think you're supposed to have. Let me tell you, the Bible says that, that with Abraham and Sarah, 
they were almost dead. Yet still, their lives were only beginning. Don't you ever fall for, for, that, for that trick of the mind, thinking that death is the end or be all. And when Jesus wept, he wept because we were hurting. But he also came to show us who has the power. And he has the power. It's not death. It's not your fears. It's not your weeping. It's not nothing around you that you can see. Sometimes we can't put too much attention to what the preacher said in Ecclesiastes that we should drink and eat for tomorrow we die. We don't live like that. I understand his sophistication, but there's more than that. There's also uh, the bomb in Gilead. There's, there's also the line of Judah. There's also the Lamb of God. There's also his blood that was shed for us. Death was nothing but a fake communion, a thing we ate when we should not have, but the Lord is able. That is why Jesus spent so much time healing, because it was the effect of death on the, on the, on the, on the human body. And he is saying that with every healing, with everything that has done, with what, what his body was afflicted, that death has no sting. Don't respect death here today. It is, it, it is not the victim. It is the Lord. And I know sadness will come, but I tell you to lift up your head, O ye gates, and rejoice, because the Lord of the wedding ceremony is here, and he is here to undo what the enemy has done. And I thank you. Oh, we thank you here tonight. We love you. We adore you. We lift you up. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you for what you shared with us tonight, dear Lord. We ask, oh God, that we're able to apply to our lives and to our hearts, oh Father God, that we can be victorious and courageous in everything we do because death is nothing but an illusion.